Welcome back to Nostalgia Trip, the series where I look at video games from my childhood and determine whether they hold up or are nothing but a nostalgic trip down memory lane, and sometimes they are really, really bad. So let's just get started, shall we? Indiana Jones. I mean, what is there to say? He's one of the most iconic action-adventure characters ever created. I mean, sure he's an homage to adventure characters from those old serials way back in the day, but he surpassed that and on top of being iconic, he's one of the most recognisable characters as well. His influence has even stretched to the realm of video games, not just with multiple Indiana Jones titles, but also without him, the Tomb Raider and Uncharted series most likely wouldn't exist. I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? It's like the George A. Romero trilogy of the dead. Without those films, we wouldn't have The Walking Dead, the, the Resident Evil series most likely wouldn't exist either. I mean, it's highly debatable that someone would have eventually had a similar idea with flesh-eating zombies, but still, it, it, it just drives me crazy thinking about stuff like that. Anyway, back on topic, there are a considerable amount of Indiana Jones-based video games, with the best being the point-and-click adventure titles created by LucasArts. I've also heard mixed to positive things regarding the Tomb Raider-esque adventure titles on the PC and N64. I think there was one on the Xbox and the PlayStation 2 as well, but I'm sure we're all in agreement that the Indiana Jones Jones trilogy on the Super Nintendo is a damn entertaining ride, which is to be expected from the same team that made the Super Star Wars titles. There was a Mega Drive port in the works, but it never came to pass. Instead, fans of the classic Sega console were stuck with young Indiana Jones. And today's game, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and as the box calls it, the action game, which is actually to differentiate it from the point and click title, but you don't care about that, no, that's the good game. If you want any indication about the quality, then look no further than this. US Gold. The same people that brought us Strider Returns. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe this won't be so bad. I mean, it is Indiana Jones. Do you know something? I've actually owned a copy of this since I was a kid, because it was Indiana freaking Jones. So of course I wanted a copy. I had to have that, right? So I do have a lot of nostalgic memories for this. But like Captain Planet, only a few of them are positive, so this does not bode well. I think we're in for a bumpy ride, so let's just get this over with. As always, let's look at the positives first. In terms of presentation, I do feel that the little animation of the film reel that plays before the start of a level still looks pretty good and very crisp, and I can't not mention Sean Connery's six-pack. The rest of the game looks... okay, I guess. Uh, it's pretty average in most places, if I'm honest, particularly in the character sprites. I mean, just look at Indiana Jones. His sprite sometimes looks as though he's wearing flares. He looks malnourished at times. And it doesn't help that he has this weedy little punch with barely any reach. This is supposed to be Indiana Jones? The first two stages take place during the opening minutes of the film, involving a teen Indiana Jones. In fact, he might even be pre-teen Indiana Jones. So, I always found it weird, even as a child, that you played as adult Indiana Jones during these stages. There is some decent animation in some areas, though. The movements of the boss in level 3 is all surprisingly fast and smooth. And, um... Uh... Let me see... Uh, maybe there's... Nope! The cries of Indian pain are just... Ugh. Genuinely sounds like he's crying every single time he's hit. Are we even sure this is actually Indiana Jones anymore? Maybe someone just stole his clothes and is pretending? I don't know, or maybe it's like some kind of cosplay that doesn't realize he stumbled into real danger. The other sound effects are passable, but nothing special. The whip sounds it sounds off. It, it's it's close, but it's not quite right. And then there's the music, which is actually pretty good, honestly. 
Each individual stage has music that feels unique to that level, and there doesn't appear to be any repeated audio cues of any kind. Even the bosses have their own individual pieces. There's some genuinely great tracks present here, from those that get the blood pumping to those that make the situation feel more dangerous and tense. But all of the good the music does is immediately washed away by the rest of the game, and these tracks painfully deserve a better game. <sighs> Which brings us to... The whip has a durability meter. The whip has a durability meter. A durability meter for the whip. Look, it might not sound all that bad, but the more you use the whip, the less effective it becomes. I mean, that would be fine, well, sort of okay if the meter only decreased when you connected with enemies, but it also lowers when you swing or break objects, or when you miss entirely. So because of this, you find yourself more often than not punching villains in the balls. And like I said, the worst thing is, the whip doesn't even break, it just gets weaker and weaker and weaker. And at the lowest level, it takes far too long to defeat enemies and destroy objects. It's just worthless. I mean, sure, the whip durability can replenish over time, but it does so very, very slowly, and you have a time limit to finish the stage, which really just makes this recharge all but pointless. There are power-ups in the stages that replenish the whip, but this is an Indiana Jones game. You want to use the whip. It definitely doesn't make you feel as though you're playing as Indiana bloody Jones. Could you imagine playing a Castlevania game where you're playing as Simon or Richter Belmont and the Vampire Hunter Whip could get weaker the more you used it? It's just so lame. Another problem with this is that a lot of the enemies have some form of projectile and can fire too quickly and at times erratically. It's another small thing that just makes you feel underpowered. And unfortunately, that's not all. As you can take damage if you jump into the ceiling or a platform platform above you. Which wouldn't be so bad if holding down the jump button didn't make you immediately jump again the second you touch the floor. Which means if you're holding it down and you're in a small alcove, then you'll be dead in seconds. It just goes against every instinct you have when you're playing a platformer from this generation. Hell, even platformers today. And yeah, I know that some of you are gonna go, Um, actually, if you did jump into the ceiling in real life, it would really hurt. But piss off with that, okay? This is a platformer on a 16-bit console. This is the Mega Drive, okay? This isn't going for ultra-realism. But that's still not the worst thing. Because Ankle High Water kills Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. I mean, the only positive from that is that it kills enemies as well, but it's... It's still so just inherently silly. I wouldn't mind so much if it was deep water or, or hell, something acidic, but it's just yet another bloody thing to artificially extend the game. And I know, I know that this is almost becoming one of those angry reviews that YouTube was smothered with due to the rise of the AVGN, but honestly, this is so perplexing. Every second I play this game, I find something else that is bafflingly terrible, and the difficulty just never lets up. So I'm just going to quickly go through all the stages so you can see how painful the game was because I'm going to quickly run out of ways to say gameplay bad. Besides the aforementioned ankle high water you also need to bypass these annoying spikes in this bloody minecart section in the first stage where you have to leap off and grab a rope. It might not look too difficult but you whiz through so quickly that it's very difficult to not only time your jump but even successfully choose the correct direction. The end of the level sees you battling Andre the Giant and then you shortly discover that there's a death trap as soon as you grab the item to finish the stage. This game is unbearably cheap most of the time if you hadn't noticed. Stage 2 takes place on top of a train and it's just full of things designed to kill you quickly. It all just feels so unfair, which is the absolute worst kind of difficulty. There's nothing to learn from here as it just feels random most of the time. The objects that would pass the train don't seem to have a real set pattern and the AI always clears the jumps easily and also they can manage to get a shot off before they jump, which means you are guaranteed to get hit. You are always going to get hit. And at the end of the stage you fight the most generic of stereotypical Native Americans. And this guy just chants <laughs> 
I don't even remember there being any natives in the film. I mean, was there? I mean, was it a deleted scene? Am I misremembering it? Am I just going completely mad? Stage three has rats on fire! There are rats on fire in the catacombs, and despite the fact they are in absolute agony as they slowly boil to death, they still make sure that their last dying act is to leap into you because fuck Indiana Jones. Also, these pits with bones will kill you instantly. Because Indy is now made out of fucking rice paper or something. Look at these pits in the catacombs. Seriously, this is ridiculous. No one cared. No one fucking cared. <gasps> look at the, look at that. There's a drop I can't possibly predict. And then there's this. <sighs> I have an arrow coming one way, and another the opposite. I can't duck, and I can't jump out of the way, so I get hit and fall into the fucking water. This is horrible! Oh, and the boss, just like stage one, has a death trap the second you pick up the end of stage item. Stage four, I remember really liking as a kid, mainly because of the look, the music, and the rain effect. The rain does actually still look okay, and you do get to punch Nazis in the gesticular area, so this elevates the stage immediately. Although the castle is apparently falling apart because every thunder strike causes parts of it to fall onto you, and naturally, touching the ground kills you. Why does it? What? Why? Why does? Why does the ground? Why does the ground kill you? What's, what? What's? It's not even barbed. Why? If it, if the, if if there was barbed wire or something, there's, there's not there's not there's not any there's not barbed wire. It's just it's just the ground. It's just grass. It's just mud. Mud. Well, not even grass. It's just mud. Look, it's it's not. Is it made? Is it made out of what? I I is it radio? What I. I just, what, what is going on? The whole stage is a confusing mess that just showcases everything wrong with the platforming. Especially with how annoying most of these jumps are. Not even swinging on the whip can save it. So you get to the end of the stage and have to defeat the most generic goose-stepping Nazi I have ever seen. And then you get struck by lightning. Struck by lightning. If you don't move, the second you kill the boss, you are dead and have to go through the boss fight all over again. I'm starting to think that maybe God might have something against Dr. Jones after that whole arc fiasco. Stage five, where the game gets kind of good? But if you don't move immediately, you die because the floor disappears. You never get a chance to breathe in this game. You never get a chance to breathe. In this stage, there are no enemies, just moving blades to avoid, pits to jump over, and some basic puzzle solving. By that, I mean towards the end of the stage, you can only jump on the letters that spell Jehovah. And something that really surprised me is that the spelling is correct. Even the large gap at the end is taken straight from the film. Don't try to jump over it, just walk straight across. The level itself is still pretty tough in areas, and these blades were a pain to avoid. But all in all, it's easily the best stage in the game, and it's the closest it gets to feeling like an Indiana Jones adventure. Now comes the final section of the game. You have to select the Grail. But choose wisely. Unfortunately, there's no cool boss like the fight with the skeleton of Donovan in the SNES game. Here, you just need to select the correct cup you believe to be the Grail. Choose wrong, and you're exposed to this. Okay, this absolutely terrified me as a child. I think it was a combination of the visuals and that nightmarish music that accompanies it. And it probably doesn't help that Indy already looks creepy as hell. I mean, what is... look at his face. That is a creepy face. I don't know who this man is, but, but, I, but I don't like him. Make him go away. If you do choose poorly, then it's game over. No continues. Nothing. Back to the start of the game, bitch. Anyway, selecting the right one should be easy if you've seen the film. Well, it would be, except that everything is almost the same colour, so you do have to be pretty observant. Ah, <sighs> that's the cup of a carpenter. You drink, take the grail and water back to Sean Connery's six-pack to heal his gunshot wound, and awkwardly flail and ride off into the distance, happy that this awful game is behind you. It's finally over! And that's it, only five stages in total, which explains why the difficulty is so horrible. Luckily, there's a cheat code for a level select, which I used because this game didn't deserve any of my free time. 
What's cool though is that not only can you select the level, but you can also select which checkpoint you want to start at, which I admittedly don't remember seeing much in games in this time. It's, it's pretty cool actually. It's fucking horrible! All jokes aside, this is an objectively terrible game and a miserable experience. There are a few positives here. The music is really, really good. And like stated earlier, the final stage comes close to capturing a decent Indiana Jones adventure. But these positives are dragged down into a nosedive by the rest of the game. Poor controls, baffling design choices, instant death traps, immediately following boss fights, underpowered Indiana Jones, unfair trial and error gameplay, and a durability meter for the sodding whip. No, I know, I cannot get past that, no, and I will never stop bitching about that. This game is not good in any sense of the word, and it's not even a solid nostalgia trip, it's just Rush. And I advise you to look away if you ever see it for sale at a retrocon. Don't even look at it. So, ladies, gentlemen, and G mutants, what do you all think? Do any of you like this game? If so, are you actually insane? Do you think it's solely a nostalgic trip down memory lane? Is it a nostalgia trip? Was it even a nostalgic trip to begin with? Comment below and let me know. And as always, like this video and subscribe if you would like to see more. But until next time, stay safe and I'll catch you later.